So I've done a lot of positive videos on what exactly is going on in the gun community, and I still feel pretty positive about it. Like, a lot of things are going really well, and I love taking the victory lap and all, but we do need to keep our eyes on the prize because if things slip, it'll get bad. Now the reason it's going positive I explained in depth in this video right here, but just a quick summary, after the lockdowns happened, a whole bunch of people went pro-gun. Enough people to make a lot of states flip if all those people actually start voting. The point is, being, on, being tough on guns is no longer a winnable position to have. If you do that, you're basically committing political suicide. So we are seeing big steps and big vic well, not so much victories yet, but we're entering in a lot of fights that have a potential of very positive outcome. So let's step back for a second and start to look at some of the negative stuff because if you don't keep your eye on the prize, well, things happen. So the big one that is, is uh, the 2022 AWB. Oh, the yays are 217. The nays are 213. The bill is passed. Now this wasn't even supposed to go to vote for the House because Pelosi didn't have enough votes. For example, if the two Republicans would have voted nay instead of yay, which means no instead of yes, it would have been a 15 to 15 split. I don't know what happens when that goes like that. But anyway, she knew for sure that she was going to get two Republicans to flip. How did she know this for sure? Now, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't tell you anything for sure. But I'm assuming it had something to do with insider trading. She either threatened to have these guys investigated for insider trading, or she offered them a piece of the pie. For example, Nancy Pelosi's annual or salary is just about a quarter of a million dollars. That's $223,000 a year. So let's pretend she lived for a hundred years and she made that from the very beginning. She lived the entire hundred years. She didn't buy food. She didn't pay taxes. She sure as shit didn't buy gas. Like she was able to save every penny of that. In a hundred years, that only equals $22 million. What is her net worth, you may ask? Well, that's 120 million. Now, understand not all of that's from insider trading. She probably got a decent chunk of that from participating in the rebellion against the Constitution on what's been going on with the Second Amendment. And yes, it is in fact a rebellion. It fits the definition. And I'm sure that she had a little bit of money to start with. I think I looked it up and it was like 2010 or 2011. She had a net worth of $80 million. So she turned $80 million into 2020 into $120 million. Now, ignore the money. Just forget about it. Pretend like the money isn't there. To prove she did insider trading, all you have to do is look at her husband's investments compared to bills that passed out. But one well-known speaker of the house is now taking center stage for her involvement in some fishy activity. Uh, over the course of your career, has your husband ever made a stock purchase or sale based on information you received from him? No, absolutely not. Right before she did a relief plan or put a bill out, about a week, two weeks before that, her husband would make a financial investment on the stock market and come out way on top because Having your wife as the house speaker is kind of like having the sports almanac that Marty McFly had. Gray's sports almanac. You can see into the future. You know which way the stocks are going to go by what bills are going to be put out, what relief plans are going to be put out, what bills are going to get shot down, what bills are going to be introduced. It is literally seeing into the future on what the stock market is going to do. Just seen the pair beat the S&P 500 performance. Nancy Pelosi has until recently opposed banning stock trading by congressional lawmakers, suggesting it was part of the free market economy. Because this is a free market and people, we are a free market economy, they should be able to participate in that. That's all the farther I'm going to go into this because you can do your own research on that. The point is, she's untouchable. If any prosecutor went after her or she got invested by it, investigated by anyone, they would get their career crushed. No prosecutor is going to touch this. Even though it's like way out in the open and super obvious, it's just not going to be touched. So I'm assuming she talked to these two Republicans and either offered them a piece of the pie 
or threatened to have them report, investigated for insider trading. So she knew these two were going to flip, so she brought it to the House, and it ultimately passed with a final vote of seven, of 217 to 213. Will it go past the Senate? I mean, anything can happen. Gonna make the world go round. So down really, anything could, but I don't think it will. But still, you're going to want to keep your eye on it and just pay attention to it, because if it does pass, it basically makes all semi-automatic firearms illegal for any citizen to own. The only people that can own it is government agents. Now there is a grandfather clause, but we all know what happens then. They become stupid expensive and extremely valuable, which basically makes them not obtainable for the normal civilian. Now they were talking about putting a bill in there to stop senators from senators, congressmen, etc., from being able to do private stock trading. Like they'd still be able to invest in like stock market groups, but they wouldn't be able to trade privately themselves. Which makes a lot of sense because when you're in one of these positions, you can literally see into the future. You know what's going to happen in the stock market. Therefore, it's insider trading. It was introduced in January of this year, but obviously it got shut down. Because if that got shut down, becoming a senator or a speaker of the house or any sort of politician would no longer be insanely profitable. And they don't want that, especially with no term limits. I mean, that's, that's a couple million dollar cash cow we're talking about getting rid of. So... Nothing happened with that. Will something happen with that in the future? Not likely. The next one we need to watch is manufacturers getting attacked. Yes, as you know, Daniel Defense has been getting attacked for the commercials they put out, which is completely absurd. I mean, seriously, how much is their advertising budget, budget anyway? Probably zero dollars, because every time a politician opens their mouth, they sell out of everything. But they counted their tweets as commercials, and then they attack them for that. Now, what is the purpose of this? Because if they can keep attacking the manufacturers enough, holding them responsible for incidences that happen in a violent nature, the ads they put out, etc., the manufacturers will literally stop selling to civilians. They won't. It won't, it won't be worth the risk. If they have a government contract, there's no reason whatsoever to sell to a civilian because they might get sued. So keep your eye on how they're attacking manufacturers. If you find a way to support the manufacturer, do that. But understand, like, if that continues, you're only going to be able to buy firearms from manufacturers that don't have government contracts, and all the big ones are going to get sued out of business. So there's going to have to be a bunch of little ones keep popping up to fill that gap, and we may ultimately have to go to 100% manufacturing your own firearms. Even if they get rid of the NFA, if they keep attacking the manufacturers for that, well, it doesn't really matter anymore. Another one to keep your eye on is ammunition. That is a big, fat, vulnerable target. That is something you will most definitely get see attacked in some way, shape, or form. For example, during the Obama administration, he labeled ammunition as an explosive. Ammunition does not fit the definition of an, of an explosive. It doesn't, because you can put gunpowder right there on the table, light it on fire, and it's not going to injure you unless you burn yourself. That is not an explosive. An explosive needs to have an explosive force when it's not in a container. Yes, it's technically a low-grade explosive, because when it's compressed, yeah, then it, then it blows out, and that's how you, your firearm fires. But they labeled it as an explosive. You may see them expand on that in some way, shape, or form, because if they make it 100% like... Now you got to have, what is it, a Class 9 FFL plus pay your explosive fees just to get it into your store. The stores that carry ammunition are just going to evaporate because nobody's going to do that. that. That's ridiculous. Plus then you'd have to have hazmat shipping. You might have to have the ammunition shipped without a primer. So you might have to buy like the primer separately. Who knows what may, have hap what may happen. But I do see that as an avenue just open and waiting for attack is ammunition. Because it's already labeled as an explosive, their foot's already in the door. All they got to do is just push it a little bit farther. So keep your eye out for any sort of ammunition attacks. That's definitely something you're going to want to pay attention to. Aside from that negative stuff, I still do feel we are on a positive road. And because of the Bruin decision, I kind of feel like the NFA's days are numbered. We'll have to see how it plays out. Anyways, appreciate you guys watching my video. If you'd like to help support the channel, got a Patreon right there. I also have affiliate links in the description down below. Just by clicking on those links, even if you don't purchase what that particular link is for, just clicking on the link 
and doing the Amazon shopping you were already going to do anyway, a little kickback for it because you came there off my channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.